morning, everybody. Welcome to Petra's Happy Place. How is everybody doing today? Um, my name is Petra, and if you are new to this channel, thank you so much for coming and hanging out with me today. Um, we do, or I like to do devotionals in the mornings during the week, and uh, just to kind of get our day started a little bit, and uh, it the right way, you know, in the Word. So, um, yesterday I started, um, reading Psalm, the Psalms, Psalm 23 specifically. And, um, I, the more I get into this book of the Bible or this chapter of the Bible, I am just overwhelmed by, um, how succinct the Bible is and how it gets right to the point. And I just love that. I love it. So um, let me go ahead and start with a word of prayer. Okay, let's start with a word of prayer and then we'll get dive right into it. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time that we could spend together in your word. I thank you for all my friends and family who are um, able to sit with me for just a few minutes and, um, and, uh, get into your word with me. And I just love that Lord. I just feel so blessed to have this opportunity. I ask that you would bless this time together and that, um, the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, Lord, that, um, I will say what you, what it is you would have me to say this morning. I ask all these things in your precious son's name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so where are we? Well, we left off. Um, we left off. We read the first two verses. And um, I'm going to go ahead and start at the beginning and read a whole chapter. And then we'll work on verse 3. Okay? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Okay, so um, I want to read verse 3 from three different translations. Oh, let's start with the New Living Translation. Um, and like I said, we're just going to read verse 3. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Okay. Okay. Then I just read um, the a New American Standard, and that is, um, oops, I'm running the wrong chapter. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And then in the Holman Christian Standard, um, it says, He renews my life. He leads me along the right paths for his name's sake. Okay? So there's a little bit of difference in the verbiage, in the wording, if you will. Um, and uh, so I wanted to, let's go over this section by section because... Um, there's a couple points that I want to make. It says he restores my soul or the other translation says he gives me strength. He, he restores my strength. And I, I want us to think about what it, what the verses said just prior to that. Um, it said that he leads me beside still waters, right? And he makes me lie down in green pastures. And this is that, that, um, idea that he is drawing us to a place to quiet our souls, to re restore our strength 
via um, the green pastures, you know, where we can where we can eat and we can graze and we can uh, break away from the trudgery of life, if you will, and then also the quiet waters that we we don't want to drink no stagnant water. We don't want it, you know, completely, you know, we want a good fresh spring water, but something that doesn't flow like off of a mountain, you know. So um, it's, it's this idea that he is refreshing our bodies, okay? But um, I like the what he says or what, yeah, what David says in verse three, it says he restores my soul. So, you know, so many times society, the world tells us, you know, you need to be good to yourself, be good to yourself. And, and I, I cringe every time I hear that to tell you the truth. Yes. I mean, that's like a given. I don't think humans have a hard time being good to themselves. I mean, I think that's innately human to be selfish and to look out for their own needs. I think that's, so that's just a side note, but I like the idea that God is not merely concerned with our bodies. He's, he's concerned about our very soul, who we are, and he wants us to be renewed in our soul. He doesn't want us to be, um, uh, oh, down and, and low and weary in our being and just not able to do anything. Um, you know, when your body is tired, I think you guys are probably wise enough to understand the concept that you you can be so totally worn out on your bed and you've had the roughest day in your life and you think I can sleep for days but that mind just keeps going and going and going and it won't shut down yeah I think this is what David is trying to portray here that God not only is concerned about the body, but more importantly, he wants to restore that inner strength, that's your soul, your very being. He wants you to relax your, not just your thoughts, but your whole mindset, if you will. Um, you know, this time of year, um, a lot of people are going on overdrive. You know, we have the best laid plans. You know, we think, oh, I'm going to uh, have everything prepared in advance so I can really enjoy the Christmas season. And more often than not, there are last minute things that we just, we're hustling. We're hustling to try to get them all done. Half the time we don't get them done. We keep putting them off, putting them off. Other things pop up and and it's this almost frenetic kind of concept where we're just going and going and going. And I like this, this concept of Jesus and God wanting, the Lord wanting to restore that, that peace within us. You know, Isaiah says, that one will come and he will be the prince of peace. You know, back in the days of the Old Testament, the people of Israel were longing for a king, a person that will give them outward peace, um, that there will be no more war. But I like to think of Jesus as the calm in the storm, that he so wants us to be at peace in our hearts. That's the peace he wants to bring us, that the world can be going 50 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour, 
200 miles, whatever, out on the outside. But our, our spirit, our soul is at peace. So it, it kind of, to me, I'm thinking about the Christmas season and thinking that it's, it's that kind of peace where I can sit and do what I love to do, which is crochet. I can sit and crochet and, and, and just be calm and look at the Christmas tree or whatever else is the fish tank, what, whatever, you know, just be calm in my spirit and knowing that I am right in the Lord, that I am okay in the Lord when everybody else on the outside is rushing to Walmart for the last minute things and doing this and doing that and putting up all the lights and doing that and doing crazy stuff. And I can just be at peace. I love that. Now let's read the first three verses again in Psalm. And let's see if we can see them in a, just a little bit different light. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness. Kind of takes on a little bit different light, doesn't it? So let's tackle this. He guides me in the paths of righteousness. Yesterday, I talked a little bit about how a shepherd is in front of his sheep. And, and Jesus himself used the, the shepherd sheep um, picture when he talks about the sheep know my voice and they follow me. And I think about picture a shepherd ahead and all of these sheep, you know, trying to catch up with, with Jesus, you know, follow, following the shepherd. And, um, and then there's so much faith that the sheep must place in the shepherd. Now, you know, sheep are sheep. They're dumb sheep, right? But they know that the person who's guiding them would never guide them in the wrong way. Do we truly believe that about Jesus? Do we believe that Jesus would never lead us astray? That he would lead us on the path, the right path, to keep us safe from all of those other things that could harm us. Wow, that takes on another light too, doesn't it? When we follow the shepherd's voice, when we truly listen to him and we're following him, we don't know where he's going. We just know that we need to follow him because he's going the right way. He's not going to get lost. But yet, you know, we dumb sheep, we say, oh, look at the pretty flower. Oh, look at the pretty sunset. Look at the pretty, look at this. And we're like looking at all the pretty things on the side and we start following them. They're not, they are not the right way. Even good things can distract us from the sound of our shepherd's voice. Wow. This season, this, this month, I say season, it's a month. <laughs> um, let's, let's work on trying to follow the voice of our shepherd, knowing that he will never lead us astray, that he will always lead us in the right way and when we get tired he knows when we get tired and he knows where we need to rest and how we need to rest and he'll take care of everything right beloved thank you so much for joining me this morning i hope you gained a little something um, from psalm 23 today and uh, i hope that you can 
figure out a way to apply it to your life a little bit this um, this season, this month, okay? And maybe it's something that we can start working on for the rest of the new year. You guys have a wonderful day, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.